This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy. You've probably been waiting all week for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, half a week. <laughs> okay, the co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. That's Sharon Moriwaki. Take a bow, please. Okay, there I Aloha. need to do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, co-host of the program, Veronica Rocha. Hello. From uh, uh, DBED and yes. the Energy Office, State Energy Office. Welcome to you. Thank you. And we have um, one of our two uh, guests, Marvin Buenconseo. Perfectly said. Okay, from Hawaii Energy. Yes. Uh, Marvin, why are you here? Well, <laughs> when we last left our heroes, the last time we told uh, we have since visited the island of Molokai, beautiful island, beautiful people. Uh, but as part of uh, our work with Sustainable Molokai in our Hui Up Refrigerator Trading Program, great program. Um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for those on the island to swap out their aging uh, refrigerators, old refrigerators, some dating 20, 30 years, for brand spanking new Energy Star uh, refrigerators. And so, but instead of you and I just talking about it, as always, I brought a little bit of video. Yeah. I'm on a movie. Let's take us all. I like the movie. Let's take us all to the island of Molokai right now. Here we go. <laughs> What's going on here? Saving energy. You know, it's a good deal. 250 for a brand new delivered on the island. Yeah. I mean, how can you beat that kind of situation? And they got a load of them. So awesome. Love it. For the island of Molokai, no Home Depot, no Lowe's. Perfect. We can save money and energy at the same time. How's that? Well, it's important, especially on Molokai, because there's no uh, supply chain here. They don't have any retail stores. There's no outlets. There's nowhere for them to buy a, a new energy-saving device of any kind. A uh, refrigerator alone here, based on the utility bill, will run them about an extra 350 a year and just excess utility saving you know, costs. So, you know, really it makes a lot of sense for them to replace their old refrigerators, and we provide them a vehicle to do that. Wonderful. These people are fantastic. Uh, they're appreciative. They're happy with uh, what we're doing. It's uh, it's it, it's always uh, a good feeling to come to Molokai and, and work with the people here, especially with our partners at Sustainable. And there you have it, another satisfied customer on the of Molokai. <laughs> you know, including the Hawaii Energy Incentives and all the work by the various uh, stakeholders, if you will, it cost each family about $250. Actually, not for a new refrigerator. For a new refrigerator. It's a great deal. General Electric Energy Star refrigerator. Uh, we were able to deliver 177 this go around. And it was so popular that uh, plans are being made to, to mm. get the next one on sooner than later, mm -hmm. hopefully about next month or so. so. Now, you yeah. get the old ones back. That's important. You know, the risk yeah. here so is that if, if they keep the old ones and put beer, beer in the garage, <laughs> That's right. then you haven't gained That's right. anything. That's right. So we, we want to make sure we take away the man fridge, if you will. Uh, and it's important because a lot of those refrigerators are just would be uh, more of a burden on the grid, if you will. And so, yes, it's a critical, compo critical component is to pull those off the grid and out of circulation because they are energy guzzlers, energy eaters, if you will and uh, replace them with Henry's So what star. happens to them? Where do you take them? Uh, well, we ship them back out. So we, they, we pull them off the island, bring them to Oahu, and then we uh, have them delivered to for recycling purposes oh, to, recycling. to the proper recycling uh, companies that can do that kind I of work. Dump, right? so yeah, no, 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 no. no. We, Just checking. No, yeah, very, 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 very good. <laughs> so you got some numbers for us? How much uh, energy does this save? How much benefit for the community? Well, as far as energy is concerned, I'm not really quite sure about that. But when it comes to saving in terms of dollars and cents, we're looking at... Uh, 
$350 over the course of a year per year. So for all those families. The cost of the electricity. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So we re we're reducing the bills quite significantly for those folks on Molokai. Yeah, and they need it because, um, you know, they, they pay high rates for electricity yeah, and because yeah. the you know, disposable income is pretty low yeah, as yeah. a community. Yeah. Uh, so what other communities would qualify for the special deal? Well, it, the, the biggest part is because Molokai and I get Lanai would be the same way. They have no mechanism to purchase uh, these themselves. So we continue to, to reach out to the various communities, but those because they're especially isolated. Uh, yeah, we do what we can to help them. Uh, you had mentioned um, you know, the, the savings um, on, on Molokai uh, per capita. They do pay the highest electricity yeah, wow. statewide. Yeah. So it was really important that we go in there to these hard to reach communities. and. Uh, you know, help them out, help us out yeah. as a community. Yeah, this yeah. helps le level the playing field. Are you, are you going to Lanai too? Or? You know, I, that, I can't speak to that. that, that hasn't been, yeah, no, but, but, you know. But you will do this again. That's right, that's yeah. right. So uh, we but don't Lanai have Lanai is in your jurisdiction? Or is it is, because it's under Maui County. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So Maui County, uh, Hawaii County, and of course, City County of Honolulu. It's only KIUC because of the co-op that the we don't really. yeah. That said, though, we, we do reach out to our friends over on uh, the, the Garden Isle to remind them about energy efficiency. KIUC does a nice job of doing the same thing in terms of you know, messaging why it's important and, and they make you know, those independent decisions on their own. So they're doing a terrific job. We work with them nonetheless, even though they don't fall under the rate payers uh, that fund the, this program. Mm -hmm. so, uh, great program, Robert. Very good. Very very good. This is really you know, yeah. backbone yeah. program for the whole Hawaii uh, yeah. energy you know, initiative. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for a lovely movie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> will you come back soon? Yes, we will, as always. I knew we'd say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the short break will be right back. Well, next we're, month, he's, wait a minute. Next month, he's going to have the whole month because it's Energy Awareness Month. That's yes. right. Yeah. That's right. So our executive director, Brian Kiloho, will be a special guest throughout the month of October. Oh, excellent. That's right. I'm bringing the big dog, big dog with me. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. He's, Ooh, he's I'm guy. looking forward to Very that. Good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. Yeah. We'll be right back after this short break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apachella. Thank you. We're all part of your community. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me. We're back, bingo. Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And if I didn't mention it before, that's Sharon Moriwaki. Aloha. Okay, co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And you have to look at their website to see Clean Energy oh, Day. Yeah. Fabulous clean website, hawaiienergypolicy.hawaii.edu. Are you all right? Correct. All right, thank mm. you, Sharon. Okay, and Veronica Roca, thank you so much for coming down. You are the co-host, so you're going to be asked to summarize at the end of this discussion. Are you ready? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Okay, Nicole, you're our principal guest today. Excited? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about geothermal, right? So, Keska say, what is it and why? And you're with HIGP, which is part of SOAS. I'll, I'll translate that. <laughs> Hawaii <laughs> Energy, uh, Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, um, a part of SOAS, the School of Ocean, Earth, Science, and Technology. And you're also with uh, the WRRC, I love acronyms, yeah? Uh, <laughs> all of Manoa loves acronyms. Uh, water. Uh, research, uh, Water Resources Research Center, WRRC, very important to our future. That's right. And you're working on something around geothermal. Talk to us. I, yeah, I work on groundwater, so un better understanding the hydrological systems in the state. And over the past few years, I've been funded by the U.S. Department of Energy to do a updated geothermal resource assessment for the state of Hawaii. Okay. What's the state of, <laughs> what's the state of geothermal these days? What's the state of geothermal is that there's one proven resource in the state that's in the Puna area, 
and um, we really cannot an answer whether or not resources exist outside of Big Island of Hawaii, and, and data suggests that they may. Discussion earlier, what, like years, a couple years back, that Maui, and they were, they were you know, probing Maui, is that like not really a resource or big We don't to know. Do? So, so there's only one way to assess whether there's a resource, that is through drilling down and finding temperature. So it hasn't been drilled. It hasn't no. been drilled, no. But maybe we can take a step back a little bit and talk about this uh, funding, this grant that you got through the U.S. Department of Energy. And you get to some really cool stuff, two faces. Yes. Uh, maybe you can describe each one of the faces and some of the um, you know, the things that you learned from your, your work there. Sure. Yeah. So DOE defined that in phase one there was to be no new data collection. So what the goal of phase one was to identify, to compile, and to integrate data, all data that exists in the state that's relevant to a geothermal resource. So we looked at geological data, geochemical data, groundwater data, and geophysical data that existed and came up with a very complicated Bayesian statistical methodology to assess the probability of a subsurface resource. And my team, we, we defined that we wanted to look at the entire state, not just one island or a portion of one island or something like that. Um, so w at the end of phase one, what we had was a probability of map of the state, probability, color-coded, you know, red is high probability of finding a subsurface resource, blue is low probability, and then also a map of confidence that said how confident we are in that probability. So where we have low confidence is where we'd want to go get more data. Where do you have high confidence? Don't say under my house. <laughs> <laughs> or, or where is there high probability? So where is there high probability of a resource or where do we want to get more data? Um, so that was phase two. We, so we were successful in phase one at getting phase two funding. In phase two, DOE said, go get more data to improve your probability map. So we know um, that Pune has working geothermal. Yeah, Pune. That would be a high probability, right, high confidence right. area. So in Hawaii, our geothermal resource exists because of magma, subsurface magma. So we would want to focus our energy where we know that there's, there is or recently was magma. That there, would be there our you highest go, probability. There you go, there you go yeah. again, there you go talking like a scientist. <laughs> you are a scientist. I am a scientist. <laughs> a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> so Kilauea is our active volcano. You know, the Kilauea caldera is a national park. We can't do much exploration in the national park. Down Kilauea's east rift zone is where Puna is. Yeah. That's also a very active region, and that's where the initial exploration was conducted and drilling. And so that's why we have the one proven resource in Puna. Um, there are other active volcanoes or recently erupted volcanoes, and then there are volcanoes like Haleakala on Maui that erupted not very long mm -hmm. ago, and there's even rejuvenation volcanism on this island where mm -hmm. there was eruptions 100,000 years ago, and we really don't know whether or not there's enough heat in the subsurface to constitute a geothermal resource. So is that what phase two, you're going to go island to island? Then so do? in phase two, what we did is define 10 kind of target areas where we wanted to collect more data, and so we're in the process of doing that, and they are from the Big Island to Kauai. So believe it or not, there's warm water wells on Kauai. Hmm. Really? Um, so you think there's warm. a possibility of geothermal on there's Kauai? There's a possibility. Hmm. Might be a low possibility, but there's yeah. a possibility. Well, we the really magic of know. all of that is wouldn't it be something if we had geothermal on every island right. in one degree or another? Yeah. Did you guys look at Lanai? We did look at Lanai. Oh, and? Yeah. What did Lanai you find? also has, I mean, quite obvious data to look at <laughs> is the temperature of water. So mm -hmm. wells are drilled to bring us our drinking water. Um, and so there's data on the temperature of the water that was found when that well was drilled. And Lanai and Kauai actually have some of the warmest water uh, in the state. You know, it's yeah. so interesting mm -hmm. to me that you mentioned Oahu. Um, what does the data say about Oahu? Is there enough data to be able to say anything at this point? Not really. Not really. Not okay. really. And a, a, a tricky thing about Oahu is that because it's so populated, and there's so much infrastructure, one of the main techniques mm -hmm. that we can use mm -hmm. to assess subsurface structures um, won't work here. Mm -hmm. So we're trying mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what to else we can do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, yeah, I think you might have pushback in mm -hmm. Oahu. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we should talk about that because... About for, pushback? Well, <laughs> we should talk about uses of geothermal because it's not all for electricity generation. Not all of it is that invasive, right? What are some uses of geothermal resource? Uh, well, Iceland, which we, you and I had talked about yeah. earlier, the direct uses of geothermal are um, for heating, where it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, so not not too relevant here um, to you know dry out fruit or thing like things like that. So there there are a lot of direct uses. 
um, that communities can can engage in to, to use a geothermal resource. But really the key, key thing that I think Hawaii should be interested in with respect to geothermal is that it provides base load power, meaning non-fluctuating power mm -hmm. different than wind and solar, which fluctuate, you know, minute to minute, hour to hour. Geothermal, you've got and it's an energy source, you can and it's call it up or 24 not call hours it up as a day, you wish. seven days yeah. a week, you know how much you're gonna get. It's the best, so it's the best. I mean, take I a believe, moment to advocate. Yeah. I mean, it lasts thousands of years. Um, it really has no negative effect on anything, um, and you can you can go island by island and, and, and bring up all this power lasting thousands of years. Um, it's a fabulous resource, and why are we, may I say, why are we limiting ourselves to Pune, which, as I recall, had no more than 48 megawatts so far. 38, well, 38 Puna's, Puna's potential is probably exponentially larger than that but yes, right oh now. Yes. Yeah, but you also don't want more energy than your community needs. Of course. So, so that is something that needs to be balanced. You could drive the whole big island on, ge on Puna geothermal, right? Probably from Puna's resource, you could. And it's reliable. The, I think, if I'm not incorrect, I think that Puna PGV does power about 80% of the big island. Wow. Um, so this is really worth making the investment in. What's interesting too is that is that uh, Ormat is running it, and it's a separate company, and um, it, it's that's what we want, right? We want RFPs, we want purchase power it. agreements, uh, we want situations <laughs> just like we have in Pune. That same footprint. Now, Mililani Trask was was talking about this what five mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. um, are you aware of any other facility that's been considered in the Big Island with other groups other than Ormat? Uh, yeah, IDP, I think is the name That's of That's her Mula company. Lotnick's company, yeah. Um, I, there might have been a proposal by one other company. Mm. Um, Anything happening? I, no. Mm. Okay. So what has to happen between where we are now and the research in your project and getting more geothermal online, either in a big island or Maui or... Kauai Good or, question. So yeah. scientifically, we need a lot more data to be able to determine whether we have resources on the other islands and what the extent of those resources are. Um, as you know, geothermal is somewhat controversial in the state, and so Not I with think me. I okay. want you to be clear about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Not with me. <laughs> but I think, and and it's something that um, that I'm I'm be trying to begin a dialogue about how to engage the community, how to have a conversation where shared learning is a term that Veronica used that I like, where we can listen to the community's concerns, but we can also advocate for the benefits of geothermal and then ideally together make a decision whether to move forward or not. There's the camera. Okay, Nicole, you see with the red light. Advocate. I mean, I got involved <laughs> in geothermal kind of in a haphazard career path. I liked the environment. I like science. I like the outdoors. And so I majored in geology. And then I studied volcanoes. And then kind of funding happened to be, exist to do this geothermal resource research. I mean, I, and I started about five years ago learning mm -hmm. about geothermal. And I have been amazingly impressed about what a good clean energy it is um, and that it's baseload. I think it's it's one maybe the only realistic way for Hawaii to achieve its 100% renewable energy yeah, goal. Yeah, good point. Um, to in into that. Um, is it cheap? Huh? Is it cheap? No, geothermal is not cheap. Ah. That's one of the problems about geothermal. I, the upfront costs are really high. So the exploration phase is really high and you have no guarantee of reward. So to be able to understand whether we have our, a resource and what that resource is, as I've been saying, we need funding. We need more funding. So I've been trying to tell the Department of Energy, we're disadvantaged to begin with in Hawaii because everything is more expensive here. <laughs> um, Are they listening? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, the Department of Energy in this administration is different than the Department of Energy, energy in previous administrations, isn't it? And they're less likely to be yeah. sympathetic to renewable in energy, even if it's really renewable. You know? Even if it's really renewable and even if it's a matter of security. So, yeah. I mean, in Hawaii, what we do to get 80% of our energy is import petroleum from outside sources, which is really expensive and I would, call, I would argue, like, insecure. detrimental to our environment and insecure. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, so we have, we have to do this. So assuming that you find it, okay, and, uh, and it's... Get funding it's, and then find it. Yeah. Uh, funding, <laughs> well, okay, is there any other source of funding? I mean, how about capital investment by Wall Street, for example? 
There is. There yeah. is. There can be developers that are that want to invest in geothermal. A lot have shied away from doing so in Hawaii because of the controversy. Controversy, which which lingers, you know. Mm -hmm. Back in the uh, gee, was it Don Thomas, you know, and your team can yep. tell us all about this. But <laughs> right. in the '90s, it was really controversial. I mean, there were really bad things happening, and lawsuits and all that. Um, is it less controversial now? A lot of that is still happening. Ooh. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. Um, so earlier this year, I had an opportunity to be in Iceland, and then maybe a couple of years ago, I was mm. in New Zealand. And what I observed was that the the community's relationship to geothermal energy there was very different. Right, mm. it was very positive. In Iceland, in particular, um, the Blue Lagoon near Reykjavik is really famous. It's a tourist site. You go there and you you know there. enjoy the water. Next time you have to take me. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> no, of course you're welcome to come. Um, but uh, the, the, the water for this natural pool comes from a geothermal power plant, right? It's the effluent of the power plant. Of course, people there are bathing and enjoying the water. Waste nothing. No. Um, whatever uh, also comes out of the geothermal power plant is also used for you know, heating, uh, heating water, heating If you take rooms. a shower in Iceland, it smells like sulfur because it, the heat yes. comes from yes. the yes. sulfur pool. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad for you. It doesn't smell that good, but no. and then, ah, fragrant ah. soap. Yeah, and then they also use it for uh, for electricity generation, yeah. right? But when you, uh, mm. I took the opportunity to talk to just local people that live there, and they love geothermal. So I guess my, my pitch is that there's a real opportunity here to have a better conversation with the local community on the subject. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity for shared learning, both for us as government entities, mm -hmm, researchers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. et cetera, to have a conversation about what we know, what we have seen in other countries about geothermal, and then to also hear the concerns from the community with regards to geothermal and see if there's a path of moving forward mm -hmm. and actually good. developing this resource, which as Nicole pointed out, we very much need base load in order to get to 100% renewable yeah, energy. Right, it's critical. So, yeah. Yes, I, I think there's a huge opportunity there. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Nicole is actually, pardon me if I talk about you, uh, Nicole is actually a very important part of this, yes. this project mm -hmm. going forward because it depends in, in such a large part on what she finds. If you find a lot of geothermal, if you find it on all islands, that would be something. Um, there then, certainly then, is more geothermal, I should say, than just in Pune. And as I think you and I have talked about, the results of a, of a drilling project that Don Thomas led on the Big Island in mm -hmm. the saddle. Mm -hmm. um, Drilled into warm water, so, and oh, that, yeah, was, that in was a an, big an, discovery right. in the way the water the under under a lot more water yeah. than expected, which yeah. could be a groundwater resource for yeah. that area, yeah. um, which is of interest to the military and possibly to Department of Hawaiian Homelands as well. Um, but and then the the water was warm at at the base of the that that borehole. Um, so, so not just, we know that heat exists outside of Pune itself, and then whether it exists on the other islands, we're still not sure. Well, so, that was... <coughs> so if we did have it on every island, so that you don't have to have cables running through, exactly. and I think that's mm -hmm. what, you know, was a problem with finding it on the big island and not being able to transport it and not being able to use all of it on that island. Mm -hmm. If you could find it on each island, how much do you need to find? Can you, yeah. you say this is worth drilling? and then put the resources and get the support to actually drill and... Yeah, so work. I think Oahu, I think I'm correct, maybe, you know, Veronica, that Oahu uses more electricity than all the other islands mm -hmm. combined. So if we were to find a resource here, I think the, the chance of it being developed would be higher, but it's unlikely that we're going to find a resource as that contains as much energy as on the Big Island, just because that's where our active volcanoes are. Mm -hmm. So as the mantle plume moves away, or the islands move away from the mantle plume, the, the resource will cool, and so we won't find as high temperature of a resource. But if you dig um, deeper, if you drill deeper, theoretically, you can have yeah. a greater probability of finding it what, on or under the mantle, no? Well, Hawaii's geothermal resources are already fairly deep relative to the mainland or to the rest of the world, um, and that's based on Hawaii's geology. We have really permeable rock our lava flows are very permeable, so the water goes down to deeper. Um, so we're already where we anticipate potentially finding a resource is at 1.5 to 2 kilometers depth. And I think 
down to three kilometers, drilling is economically viable right now, but not much it's cheaper expensive. than that. Yeah. 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 Before we close, though, I mean, I think you touched on something I really would like to explain to people. <clears throat> Your work is really not just the geothermal, it's also water. And when you drill for one, you look at the other, too. And your team uh, found some remarkable things in, what is it, Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa area, the saddle. Uh, things we didn't know. We, did, we, we, did, we had an imperfect understanding of the way the lens works. So I guess the lens. And yeah. we, we found there was water way high over sea level, fresh water, uh, in, in unlimited amounts, really, lots of lots of Large water, volumes, yeah. not only on the big island, but this, this kind of uh, investigation mm -hmm. found that it was also on other islands. So we have a whole new view of water, we have a whole new source of water, and water and geothermal are connected. So the work that Nicole's doing is really important for a lot of reasons in this state. And it would be, you know, it, it, it is likely to give us a new water supply of enormous magnitude, and it is likely also to find it all about geothermal. So, can you talk about that? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Jay's very optimistic. I, I hope so. It's true that our, we've talked about, last time I was on your show, that the models, prevailing models um, of Hawaii's hydrology are, are decades old. And in select locations, there's updated models. And largely, the USGS has done that work, um, which is great. But there's still a large gap in understanding. And, and we think it's because there's subsurface geologic structures that affect groundwater movement and storage that we don't know exist. So this lens idea is correct. But if you put a, a boundary in the lens, it's going to affect what groundwater does. So we're trying to piece that together. Mm. place by place across the islands, because it's not just a uniform model that's going to exist for statewide. No, um, but every way you learn something, that lesson applies somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. in principle, even if not in geologic reality. Yeah, yeah. In principle, it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so tell us where, where you are in this. So the uh, USDOE funded yeah. you. So phase two will cover what? And then will it move to phase three? Yeah, so phase? we're currently in phase two. Um, and this is the data collection phase to improve our probability map. Phase three decisions uh, actually have been made. And when the new administration was voted in, um, the mandate in phase three was to validate a geothermal resource. So we were, my team was successful in moving forward to phase three, but not with enough funding to, mm. in fact, validate a resource. So we're looking to form a partnership in order to do, to do so. Are there other places, um, either in the country or elsewhere, that are doing similar research that Absolutely. you could kind so, of pull resources uh, and work together? The or? problem is Hawaii's geology is unique relative to the mainland hmm. U.S. or even Alaska. And um, the, you know, so, yes, there were five teams nationally selected to move forward. So there's a team looking at the um, northwest, looking so looking at the volcanoes around like Mount St. Helens area. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Reno team was selected to move forward. So in the Great Basin, their geothermal resource. There's a there's a lot of geothermal in the in the country actually, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in the mainland U.S., I think geothermal is almost universally perceived positively as a good resource. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, so. you know, <clears throat> you could save us a lot of money. I'm thinking <laughs> of San Diego. San Diego is in a project now of somewhere between 10 and 12 billion dollars for desalinization because uh, they figure they're going to run out of water. Um, so your research, you know, yeah. could save us the cost of desalinization when we start to run out of water. If there's water. If there's I mean, water. So if there's not water, and it's possible there's not, I can't make water appear. So, okay, well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I was counting on you. The other thing is you could find geothermal and save us a lot of money there. Yeah, I think the geothermal energy. is, uh, geothermal and groundwater. So I, I, myself and Don actually started uh, this Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resources Center, and there's a website on there, or we, we have a website that has a lot more information about, in particular, the geothermal and the history of geothermal in Hawaii. Um, so I'd encourage anyone, any viewers, to go there. Can you just say what it is? It is. Can you say what it is? H I G W W. Yeah. Look at H I G P. Well, Google it. H I G P. H I G P. Edu slash H G G R C is the acronym. Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resources Center. And so those two are really 
really particularly geothermal and groundwater, I think are particularly relevant for the state. Last question, what's the timeline on this, assuming you can get the funding? What we will be looking at for your project and from some fruition out of your project? Well, phase three will end in 2019. Um, that's the timeline we've been given by DOE. We're, I, as a researcher, am not going to develop geothermal. I would advocate that it's responsible in my opinion, the state should know what its geothermal resource is and yeah. then maybe mm -hmm. engage in the discussion. Well, the state of, Energy Office. Will yeah, be. <laughs> that's why we, my job. Yeah, but, and you make your reports public. I mean, yeah. there's no secrets here. Right. So uh, somebody, who, an entrepreneur could come around, and a developer of energy, renewable energy, could come around and have right. great benefit from what you find. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's the goal. For, for us, we would stop at, at like research and we either know or have or strongly suspect there's a resource there and hand it off to the developer. Yeah. And at that point, I think engaging in community, like, starting now, I would like to engage in the community discussion, but also at that point when, when it would be production of a resource, it's, yeah. it's very important to have that dialogue. Yeah. Well, I, what, I get, what I get here is that, <clears throat> is that at the end of the day, we need the state, that's you, Veronica. We need the state <laughs> to take it. an active role in developing geothermal, um, you know, to make it happen. It's not the utility necessarily, it's the state of Hawaii, which has all these claims on mineral rights, including geothermal. So, so yeah, the state gets a royalty from development of a resource. Right, right. That so, goes to where? Yeah. It actually, no. <laughs> That'd be nice, no. It goes to uh, DLNR and I believe to DHHL and perhaps even OHA, yeah. Yeah, so that, that I say all of that about the state because we're out of time, mm -hmm. and I thought you were gonna make a, a kind of summary at this point. Happy to. And I hope you include <laughs> the state's role <laughs> in what Nicole's That's talking right. about. Very Absolutely, so today we had Nicole from the University of Hawaii very long acronym from your department, so I'm not going to try to repeat it. I'm joined in two departments, so it makes it more confusing. <laughs> Perfect. She talked about the great research that they've done under the phase one and phase two of the play uh, fairway analysis under USDOE, in which they basically compiled all of the learning of more than 30 years of geothermal research and analysis throughout the state. And then in the second phase, um, they further helped to uh, characterize the resource. Um, they did win in a, uh, a third phase, uh, but of course they're looking for partners. So if anybody knows uh, any partners that would be interested in this field, you know, please by all means contact Nicole. Um, and I'm really excited about this research that Nicole is doing. Uh, I think it's fundamental and foundational to move forward with geothermal in the state. And really happy that uh, our office is also one of the um, the people that have really been uh, excited about the work that Nicole and her team is doing. So with that, thank you so much, and thanks uh, Jay for having in the show and also Sharon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you.